Melanie Radel, yes? All right, is a 23-year-old early childhood education major in her final year at MSUM. Over the last five years, Melanie has worked at Dakota Montessori School with students zero to six years old. She has also worked as a server, manager, and baker when able. Melanie is currently the president of MSUM Student Organization, Educating Education Minnesota Aspiring Educators, or EMAE. She helps plan and organize professional development and community engagement events with the rest of the EMAE team. After graduating next fall, Melanie hopes to become a lead preschool teacher, apply for grad school, and gain her Montessori certification. Without further ado, Melody Radel. Thank you. All right, so I am Melanie Radel. R-O-E-D-L, it sounds weird, but it's what it is. Um, I am 23 years old. I am, let's see, I am, like I said, I was, the or like Asia said, I am the president of EMAE. If you're an education major out there, join our, woo! <laughs> join our, join our organization, please. Um, anyway, <laughs> a little bit about me. I am the youngest of five, so I'm usually not used to having like all this talking time. Um, and let's see, I have six beautiful, amazing nieces and nephews. I love them all so much. They're crazy sometimes, but they do it. So today I'm very excited. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, a little bit about my journey before I decided that I wanted to become a teacher and then how those aspects of teaching kind of helped me become a different person. Um, I, so... I came from a small town in Minnesota, it's a population of about 600 people. I always tell people, don't make any special trips, don't go out of your way if you haven't been there. It's not that great. Um, I grew up in a very rural area and it was honestly just not my cup of tea. Um, I didn't like it and I did not have a very good attitude about that. I graduated in 2017 and I got out of there. I moved to Fargo. I went to NDSU for a year for art education. And then I was like, hey, I don't want to be a teacher. I don't really like kids. I'm going to drop out. So I did. I dropped out for about a year and a half. Didn't want to go back to school. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. During that year and a half, I kind of lingered. Um, I dated a guy that I did not like, and he was like the worst. Um, that's how it goes. My family knows. Um, and then I took a job at a diner. It was a 24-hour diner, and I worked 24 hours a lot. I think the longest shift I ever worked was 22 hours. I worked a 22-hour shift. Um, but no, so I was like nocturnal, and I never saw my friends on the weekends, and that's just the way it was. Um, so in about 2018, fall of 2018, I was trying to quit my second job, and my sister-in-law told me, they were short-staffed at their school, Dakota Montessori School, and she was like, hey, you should work here. So I was like, I don't know, I don't really like kids, but I don't want to work at this other job. So I did. And I hated it. Um, I, everybody was like so positive and happy and like patient and like I just did not feel very confident and I was like, this just isn't for me. I, I don't know. So I quit. I worked more hours at Kroll's, hated it, nocturnal, never saw friends, just saw my crappy ex-boyfriend all the time. And um, then I, and then one, I think it was April 2019, I was like, hey, this sucks. And I was like, I don't want to just like be a server all the time. So I did something. What did I do? Oh, I started walking dogs. I was a volunteer dog walker with Homeward Animal Shelter, and I forgot to put pictures of the dogs in my slides, so I'm so sorry. Um, but no, so I started spending a little bit more time outside, and I was like, I like this a lot better. And then I realized that I was very unhappy, and I was like, I can't be working at this job anymore. And I went back to the school. I remember talking to my sister, and she told me that, she was like, what are you going to do? You didn't like it last time. And I was like, I'm, I'm just going to fake it. I'm going to fake it till I make it. I'm going to wear the dresses, I'm going to sing the songs, I'm going to use the voice, it's going to be great, everything's going to be peachy. So I went from, and 
I made some like last minute edits to this, so it might look a little weird, but. So I went from 2018 Melanie, I was bummer city and not happy, so negative. Um, didn't like my job, didn't like my boyfriend, never saw my friends, hated having fun. And then in 2019, I started working as a teacher. I was like, wait a second, I actually really like this. I was super happy, I faked it, and then I made it. So look at that. Um, I was excited about things, like, especially because, like, if you've ever seen, like, a two-year-old get excited, they're like, oh, my God, a butterfly, and you're like, yeah, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> it's so exciting. Um, no, so I think it, I just really want to emphasize this part was because if I was sitting in the audience about, like, six, seven years ago, I would have been like, God, this girl's annoying, I don't like her, like, she's stupid, like what, everything's going to be super positive and happy, like I was like not that type of person, but that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so I'm going to be sharing more about positive influences. So working in a school environment, and I really appreciate everything that Dakota Montessori has done for me this past like few years to kind of help me grow into my own and become this person that I am and that I like being. Um, so as a teacher, you have to have a positive environment and interactions for students. Um, so you have to think about, um, oh, so you have to think about a positive environment to grow. Uh, like when you have a plant, it, what does your plant need to grow? Does it need, it needs sun. It needs sun to grow. Well, it's similar with kids. You know, you can't just expect them to get a concept. You have to encourage them. You need to tell them, hey, it's okay. You can do it again. And then, you know, and trying too. Trying and trying and trying again is a huge part. Uh, part of Montessori too is like kids do a lot of like repetitive actions, repetitive things to see that they succeed. So we also talked about... Oh yeah, what you're capable of. And like, think about if somebody tells you that you can't do something. It's kind of discouraging, it's a bummer. You know, if you draw a picture of a horse and people are like, hey, that horse sucks. Do you want to draw another picture of a horse? Not really. I draw a picture of a flower, but that's just me. Um, but, you know, it's discouraging. Whereas if somebody draws a picture of a horse and you're like, hey, the mane looks really good and the tail looks really good, his legs look a little short, but otherwise I think you did a good job. I can't wait to see what else you can make. You don't want to draw another horse. You can me, you're gonna be the next freaking not Mozart, Picasso, right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> um, no, and then another thing too that we did in with like preschoolers and Montessori and everything, working with little little guys, um, is their validation of emotions. Like, it sounds ridiculous, but instead of being like, you know, like acknowledging that, okay, you are sad. That's okay. Like, all right. Like, hey, you look really excited. I'm glad. And everything like that. Like, even when kids come into a classroom, you're always like, oh my gosh, so happy you're here today. Um, so that was just some of the things. And then rephrasing, too, was another huge thing that I always saw in the school that we did with the kids. So it's kind of like when your parents told you, you know, you're like, do I have to clean my room? And you're like, you don't have to, you get to. You know, so putting that positive like spin on that, like, you know, it's not a chore, you know, it's an opportunity to clean your room and see what old things that you had. Um, so it's really just like focusing on highlighting the positive, like what's good in this situation? Like, hey, I saw that you punched me in the face. I'm sorry you feel that way, but like, I'm going to look so cool with this black eye. Like, look at that. So even if it's something like super dumb, like it was just awesome. Um, and then also as a teacher is like, you focus on strength rather than weaknesses. So that's once again, back to our horse drawing too, instead of being like, you can't draw a horse. Look at what they've done. What can they do? Okay. Their legs were a little short, but like you can work on that. You know what? We'll try again next time. Um, and then this is just kind of like a table that I found that I kind of copied off of uh, that a lot of like teachers and parents will use for like kind of positive like parenting or teaching uh, where it's like, you know, instead of saying, be quiet, stop. He says, hey, can you please use a cool, calmer voice? You got that. 
Um, a big one is stop crying. My dad was always like, I'll give you something to cry about. I was like, oh my God. Instead of, you know, versus, hey, you seem sad. What are you going to do? <laughs> like, um, and then one thing too that I kind of realized when I started working in DMS too was my boss was going through a training one day and she said, and this is when everything and like rephrasing positivity really hit me, was she said, every day is a great day at Montessori as like uh, trying to like smooth everything over with parents and making sure that like this is a perfect, beautiful center to be at and like everything's great and happy and butterflies all the time. Was it? No, are you kidding me? I got thrown up on. Like, that's not butterflies, but it's a great day. And even that kind of goes into being like, hey, you, um, being like, hey, you know what? Instead of saying, hey, they were really sad today and they cried all day. Being like, hey, they seem a little sad, but we, um, we just got some extra cuddles today and it was okay. It sounds a lot better. So, and then the other thing too is patience. So behavior is communication, seeing what people are doing and being like, hey, they need help. Like, this is what this is actually meaning. So instead of kids throwing sticks around like the yard, you'd be like, hey, it looks like they're bored. Maybe they need something else to do. Um, and this is one of my favorite quotes by Maria Montessori too, and it's progress is not linear. So even though yesterday was super awesome and you'd feel like you took a step back today, it's okay, because you know what? There will be two steps forward tomorrow or four in a week. It'll be fine. So the other things I did, so basically implementing this in my personal life, um, I treated myself like a preschooler. <laughs> I talked to myself that way. I'm like, hey, Melanie, it looks like you're going to go home, make yourself some soup. It's going to be really good soup. I bet you're going to enjoy it. Oh my gosh, you forgot to put in the microwave. You silly goose. Um, and some of the ways you can do that is your environment. So to like go home, take a look. What's in your environment? Is it things that you like? Why would you have something that you don't like? You know, I told my friend the other day, I was like, if you didn't like your lamp, would you have it here? And he was like, you don't like my lamp? I was like, no, I do. I was just making a point. <laughs> um, but even then, like in my apartment, I always put things on the mirror, stickers, positive stickers and reinforcements on the mirror so I can wake up and look, you know, if it's live, laugh, love, that's okay. It's not my cup of tea, but I don't know. Um, the other thing is attention to your needs. Take a breath when you need to. I did this with my dad the one day after working at the school. He came, he called me and he was living and was like yelling at me. And I just went, you seem upset. What seems to be the problem? And let me tell you, that worked. <laughs> I've never seen it work so well before. He just didn't know how to pull up the right tab on his computer. So he made it. Um, and even then too, like taking care of yourself. I'm awful at self-care, but like do what you need to do sometimes, like do what makes you happy. And then rephrasing too is the last, last thing. Uh, keep an open mind. Be like, Hey, why is this idiot walking in the middle of the street? Like, no, maybe his grandma died on the sidewalk one day and he's afraid of sidewalks. So he's going to walk in the middle of the street and you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Um, and asking why too, that's a big one for me because I always enjoy having, um, I understand concepts a lot better when I have an explanation of them. Um, instead of saying, hey, stop throwing sticks, you say, hey, please don't throw sticks because I'm really worried you're going to hit somebody. I'm like, do you want to hit somebody? No. Do it to yourself too, man. Like, you can say, hey, Melanie, please don't text your ex at two in the morning. This is not a good idea. He was kind of mean to you, so don't do that. And you're like, oh, okay, you're right, you're right. But yeah, so those are a few things I would like you guys to remember and take away with you today is that surround yourself with people and things that you enjoy and what makes you happy. If it's your cat, it's your cat. You know what? I'm awful, but I am like so good at just cutting people out. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you call me ugly and like, bye. <laughs> Um, and then also patience, be patient with yourself and with others and emphasize the positive things like, Hey, my car got stuck in the mud, but you know what? I'm going to learn how to get my car out of the mud today. There we go. And then also very important last thing, have a good time. You know what? As long as you're enjoying yourself and you're having the best time making your own jokes, that's going to be awesome. It might even rub off on some other people. So I think that is all the time I have. In fact, I think I went over. So thank you guys so much and have a good day.
give it up for Melanie Radel one more time.